Okay, 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 okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm gonna blog a little bit here. I'm gonna change the show up a little bit here and um do something different here for my show. I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. I'm gonna sit that down right there. And I got a piece of paper here that I have here. I said I'm gonna start um putting my brushes with the stars, my brushes with the stars, meaning my interactions with the stars are the entertainers of the world from back in, starting from all the way back in the 80s. I'm going to go with it like that. And I have a list here that I just wrote down right quick for you of a bunch of stars that I've went across in my lifetime. Okay, everyone? Welcome, as I said, to the DC Frenchman Show. And this is my vlog for tonight, but I'm going to go, as I told you, my interactions with all of the entertainers and the stars. Some are good, some are bad, some want to be bad, some I want to be bad. <laughs> but they, most, most of them are just regular people. Just regular folks. Okay, guys, here we go. First on my list is Run DMC. The first on my list is my interaction with Run DMC. Okay, here's my interaction with Run DMC. It was back in the 80s. I was, I was with both of my uncles. I was 18, right, probably about 18 just going on 19, whichever one it was. Run DMC was in the club up here in Washington, D.C. off of the whole gates on Waterfront, downtown Washington, D.C. Him and the whole gang was in there, and I didn't know anything about it, okay? So it started out like this. Me and my uncles, my two uncles, which one of them is deceased, my uncle Tommy Lewis, which he killed himself. That's a whole different story there too. He killed himself and oh, he tried to kill his wife and tried to kill, well, and he killed her sister. Only he and his sister died. And I love my uncle because he taught me how to ski. He taught me how to play tennis. He played um, tennis with Arthur Ashe when they were in college, as he told me before. So that's what made me so good at tennis. If you see on my YouTube channel, you see me practicing tennis. That's where I learned from my uncle. But one night it was like, nephew, take us to a club. My uncle, he stayed over in Leesburg, Virginia, and my other uncle stayed another part of Virginia somewhere. So they came together and they picked me up. They came to D.C. I was 18, 19 years old. So they was like, take us to a club or something. What you, what you know? What's going on? My daddy didn't let me go out a whole lot. I was in Catholic school. He didn't like me really going out a whole lot going to no clubs. He didn't put up with bull crap like that. That's what he would call that's nonsense to him. He would call that nonsense. So um, my uncle them, they came over. My daddy was at work. I got dressed and I jumped in that car with them and we drove downtown Washington, D.C. to the Hogates. This is a place called the Hogates that people used to eat at downtown Washington, D.C. And so um. We go to the club. I show them my idea. I was proud of having because maybe I had a 19 year old. They got me up in there. It was like four of us up in there. I'm walking around the club. My uncles, they over there drinking. I couldn't drink and stuff. I didn't have a, my ID wasn't good enough for, you know, I wasn't old enough. So I'm walking around the club, walking around the club, and I go back over towards the bar back to my uncle them after I, um, got through, you know, cracking on the women or whatever, hollering at the, the females and stuff. So I goes over to the bar. I see my uncle, I, mean, I see my two uncles over there drinking, chilling on the side of the bar. So I get closer to the bar and I see this fine girl. And when, I, when I'm walking to the bar, I see this bald head dude, this bald head dude, which was Run. It was, what you call him? Rev, Rev Run. It was Rev Run. Rev Run was at the bar. And I walks up to um, Rev, I said, damn, that looks like Reverend Run. That can't be Reverend Run. I said, me walk close. I get close up to this dude, closer. I said, damn, I said, 
Dang, man. I said, you look just like um, Run DMC. Look just like Run DMC. And this mother said, he did. <laughs> Put his hands, did like this. Did like that. Mother, who the, do you think I am? Who do you think I am? And he did like this. Everybody was looking at me in the bar. Then I seen everybody turning around and stuff, looking like I was a troublemaker. I'm the youngest man in the club. I'm like, um, I was geared to say something because I'm from up here and I don't. I was young, but I don't play them games like that. So I was geared to say something to him, and he was like, he did his hand like that, and he pointed it over to um, Jim. Not Jim, but he pointed over to the tall one with the Kango on, with the big old Kango glasses on, those big Kango glasses, and he was like, it wasn't like there was a distance from me. We was face up, two feet from each other talking, then big boy stepped over. I used to have a lot of plaits and dreads in my head back then when I was younger and stuff. I used to have a bunch of hair and stuff. My shit was really, really long. So I'm in the bar, I see my uncle them coming closer towards like they like, you know, what's going what's up? What's up? You know what I'm saying? But it wouldn't all that call for. Then out the corner of my eye, I seen somebody walking towards me. He was a brown skinned cat. This is why I love this man and I always love him. Rest in peace, Jam Master J. This is who I'm talking about. This is my subject of it, because the other two, cool, but no one is cooler and was cooler than Jam Master J. Jam Master J walks over out the corner of my peripheral vision to the right of me, looks at me, sees I'm a young, cool cat. Me and him had the same dreads. This is when he used to have his hair in plaits and dreads. He had him going back dreaded. He looked at me, grabbed me around the neck, said, come on, young, you chilling with me tonight. And I was like, Damn, this is Jam Master J. Oh my God. No, no, Jam Master J. My uncle them, they looked at me and started smiling because they was very they was always impressed with me. They always was like, they got a my they nephew was cool as hell. They always said that I was cool as hell when I was a kid and that I was gonna grow up to be something. They always said this to me. And so I always took that, you know, to heart. And it made me proud to make them smile at me up in the club, going with them to the club to see, to go to the club for the first time. And I meet Jam, and I call these guys out because I knew them. I knew them from rapping and stuff. My uncle and them didn't know them. They probably knew them, but they wouldn't own it like I was as a kid. But Jam Master J grabbed me around my neck. He was like, come on, you hanging with me tonight. Jam Master J grabbed drinks. This is no lie. He got drinks from off of the bar, which I told you I was too young to drink, to buy a drink. And I really had never drunk a drink before really in my life. I hadn't, I'm not a drinker. I'm still not a drinker. But Jam Master J got some drinks. He grabbed his drink and he got some drinks. He had his arm around my neck the whole night like, you chilling with me? We're going to talk to some of these babes, man. We're going to talk to some of these babes. I said, for real. I looked at him like they said, for real, young. Walked around the club, me and him was talking to girls together side by side all night. He was grown, he was older than me, and I was young and stuff, but we still, we talked to females all night long. And then I'm looking over there at um, um, Run, Run, and um, the other big cat. I'm looking at them like, yeah, nigga, this my nigga now. You know what I'm saying? This is my nigga, he my nigga too. And you, you can't be angry with me no more. So I hit him with that right there. But, um... We walked around, every every girl we walked up to when we was talking to the girl, they were like, you know them. I was like, yeah, this is my cousin right here. <laughs> I was like, Jam Master J is my big cousin. He bought me out with them tonight, which I was, you know, taking on. I was fibbing, but I was trying to be cool. I wanted to fit in, and I wanted to be cool. And I was cool that night. It was back in the 80s. Summer night, Washington, D.C., off the pier of Washington, D.C., where the spirit of Washington and all that stuff is, which I used to drive all those boats and stuff like that, too. Another story to tell. I'm going to be the storyteller. 
Okay, my uncle them, we parted. I ain't get no telephone numbers. They went on about their business. I went about my business, but my uncle them was like, man, you was cool tonight, boy. Well, we love you. You was cool. You is a cool dude. So I always paid, you know, I always liked to run DMC them because I parted with them and chilled with them. And then when Jam Master J died recently and I heard about that, that destroyed me. It really destroyed me. I couldn't understand because he was the coolest one out of the band. He was the coolest one out of the band. And that's a hint, the band. <laughs> if you know who the band is. I have a story about that too. Okay, my next story. The next story is going to be about another star i'm gonna switch from stars to stars in different times and different eras too because i'm gonna just do it like that it's gonna be sweeter like that so you can just i didn't want to categorize it but i'm gonna just go down the line i picked them out on this list how i brought them out of my mind and how i was thinking about it and stuff but my next star comes off of the movie with the movie is called Belly. The movie Belly. Yes, the movie Belly with my man, the dog. You know who the dog is. Everybody knows the dog. DMX, the dog. And I just missed the dog. I had just missed DMX with my daughter downtown D.C., um, recently, just before he passed away, maybe a month before he passed away, he partied and drunk drinks with my daughter, Kiana Collins. He drunk drinks with her, partied all night, and I have pictures of that. She called me, but I didn't wake up that night um, coming to see what she was talking about. But she was a bartender down there, and she was serving him drinks, smoking cigarettes, and doing everything. He was bar smoking cigarettes and drinking with my daughter. But this one is not about... The dog, this one was about one of the cast members that was on the show. He was the one that was in the basement. It was the young, dark-skinned dude with his eyes kind of pop. They had him in the basement after they had did a robbery and stuff. They had did this robbery, and um, when they was downstairs, he was like, Count that money. Strip them. Take them clothes off. Take them clothes off. The dog said, take them clothes off. Strip. And I strip. And the nigga was, aye, aye, aye. And he would hit him with the eye, with the eye, eye. That's the cat I'm talking about. The eye, the eye, the eye guy. <laughs> okay, here's how the story started on this one right here. Here's how I met him one morning. I was an unsavory character back in my days. I used to do things to get money, any type of things, sell shit, do anything I could to feed my children, my family, my mother, my brother, my sisters, anyone that I could help. I got money just to do that for them. It was never for myself because I've always not really cared about myself too much until I started getting older. In an old age, I started caring about myself then. But... This morning I was out. I said, shit, I got to go get these, get rid of these, get these jitters, get rid of these jitters. So I was like, um, I was in Raleigh, North Carolina. I was down in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I was at, over by St. All College. If you know the historical black college over in North Carolina called St. All. It was, I got a few stories about St. All too. A few of the people on my list are going to be participants that went to that college when they were young and stuff and I'm going to tell you their story too but I was at St. All for this story right here over by that way getting rid of them jitters so I um came out that morning I don't know if I was on my motorcycle or whatever however I was getting out probably I was just on the block doing what I do so I'm walking up by the barbershop, because we own a barbershop over by that way, too. My family own a barbershop over by that way. It's called the White's Barbershop. And I'm walking, geared to go up by the barbershop, see what's going on, get this paper, try to make some of this free paper. And I'm walking, 
And I look up and I see only one dude out there with me in the morning time. He bummy. He walking bummy. He ashy as crap. This nigga's ashy, eyes bubble. Everything is going on with him. He's bubbled up this morning. He look like he's trying to do the same thing I'm up to. So I'm thinking, yeah, oh yeah. It goes some money right here. I see some money right here. It's the first lick right here. I'm about to get this lick right here. So I walk up to the nigga and I'm looking at him and I'm like, yo, he looked for me, but I couldn't put his face to the to the to the face and stuff. Then when he started talking, the voice was more familiar than it sounded. I'm like, who? I said, I know you or something. He was like, nah, you don't know me, but um um da 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 whoop 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 I need I need something. I need something, man. I need to um he was bumming. He was bumming. He wasn't doing so good. He had done already did that cast role, which he told me he didn't get paid that much for. He said they didn't really even pay him that much for that. He was just one of his boys hooked him up with it. And it was just he came in just to get ass naked on the road to make him some money. And I could tell that from because he was out there. He wasn't too clean. He just he was out there. He was doing what I was doing out there, Joan. He was on the meat muscle trying to get that money. You know what I'm saying? Out there trying to get that money. But um, I hollered at him. He said, man, I'm the man from, um, I'm the dude from um, Bailey and stuff. You remember? And he said, he hit me with the rock. I said, oh, that's where I know you from, the movie. And he was like, yeah, man, it's me. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, oh, man, I'm about to get this dude. He probably got it. But he ain't had nothing. I seen how he ain't had nothing. So I said, you can hustle. You can get down with me if you're trying to make some paper and shit. I'm, you know, I'm you get down with me. Which I ain't, I wasn't no big time. I was just getting, doing what I do. My man is crap. He hung around when we fired up, smoked with me that day. He was telling me about how he got the role. That's how I know he, how he got the role and how he, what he did it for and stuff. He told me he was over there visiting one of his homeboys at St. All and stuff like that. So that day it was pretty cool, man. I'm smoked together, chilled out. Probably made him about twenty, thirty, forty dollars. He ain't really make a lot because I ain't have a lot to give him, but I turned him on to something, you know what I'm saying? So they ain't be hungry. Hey, I turned him on to something. So I helped the star on that one. How about that? Spot with him, okay. Oh, and while I'm at it, at that, I seen another one down here. I just looked down on my list. I see, speaking of saying all, the Fushnickens. And Das Effects, if you all remember them, that's another two rap groups that's back in the 80s, too, and 90s, early 90s and stuff. I met both of them, and I was on that. I was on that, that Robin tip and shit. I was on another, taking another man's stuff without asking tip back then and stuff. And I was dying to meet anybody that had anything blingy, flossy, or whatever. But I'm not like that. I'm a reformed person. Everything reformed me. Life reformed me. Jail reformed me. Church reformed me. Religion reformed me. Youth reformed me. Old folks reformed me. So I'm a reformed. Angels reformed me. So I'm a reformed person now. So these stories that I tell y'all, I am not like that anymore. I'm a cool cat, cool man now. You know what I'm saying? Cool man, cool, responsible man. Okay, but I met the Fooshnickens one night and Das Effects. I don't know what they was doing, which I think they was going to college over there. One of them boys was going to college over there. I don't know which one was going to college, but I was working at a wholesaler's, at a wholesale, um, wholesale grocery store distribution center. I forgot wholesale. It was called some wholesalers down in North Carolina. Again, I'm hanging down there when I was young, trying to get out the city because it was too much going on for me and stuff. I too much going on. Too much I smelled too much piss in the alley and too much dope and hair run and bam and shit like that. I ain't like a bunch of stuff like that. And plus ass whoopings for me if I didn't go to school because I was going to Catholic school. My daddy had me in all Catholic schools and stuff at all times. He always had me in Catholic schools and he won't me in public schools. But I met these dudes. I was working in North Carolina in the grocery store. I was a supervisor putting up stock at night. It was on the late night. 
So, oh, you just made me, y'all just made me remember something that I did down that way too, up inside that joint. But um, even when I worked, I used to do bad things. I would have a job and go out at night and still do the bad. That just shows you the black man's plight in life is just hard on us. We keep working, still don't get nowhere. Just like this YouTube. I'm a YouTube and like hell and I don't know where I'm going to get. I don't know where I'm going to get and where I'm going with it. I do know I have um, um, fat on, 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 on the internet for my son and my family, my daughters to see me in a, a movie. You can say it's a movie for me for my family to look at when I'm gone away from here. But when I met these boys this night, I was working. It was on the late night. It was probably... I went in at 12, 1 o'clock at night because I would work all night long. And I seen them coming in. I seen them coming in how I knew they was coming in. And it was them. They came in rapping and shit with some nice, nice clothes on. They had on nice clothes, gold. Them boys was nice. And I knew them anyway because I love them. It's like the, stick it down. Stick it down. Stick it down. Bam, bam. I do like Sam Bam. I rock feet like Bam Bam. Y'all know what I'm talking about, though. The Thoo Snickers and Dos Effects, almost the same. They was almost the same, but um, they came in, they was looking for, they came in looking for beer, and beer hours was over with, and I was the manager of the freezer, everything. So I was like, shit. Man, I can't let these boys go out in my store without having nothing to drink. So I was like, hold up. I got y'all, niggas. I got all y'all and stuff. So knowing me, you know me, street and street me, and the the, the 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 employment in me being a supervisor and now I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do this and look cool in their eyes and like I'm the man up in the store and I'm love their music at the same time. I said shit. I'm gonna take it out the free. I'm gonna get them some cases. I'm gonna take it out the freeze and get them some cases to drink. And I'm gonna pay for it in the morning when I leave and tell the people that this is for something that I had bust open. I threw it away and I was just gonna pay for it like that, but not knowing they had cameras back in the days, I'm, my mind, you know, uh, that's another story too, how I got caught up with that in the future and shit, giving them something and still paying for it, and they were like, you ain't had to lie, you paid for it, but um, the food snickers them came in the store that night, in my mind, I was buying them, I was trying to really set the food snickers them up, man, I was trying to set them up, I wanted them to be my friends, because I wanted them to start being my customers and coming when they come to Raleigh, they can start grabbing my my bud up and getting bud from me when they come to Raleigh. I was trying to get my get me to get me get them to be me. You know what I'm saying? Get them to be on my team and stuff. And I was go either that or either I was gonna rob them, one or the other. Either I wanted what they had around the necks, arms, and chains. I looked out with them with the brew, and I wanted what they had on their neck all at the same damn time. All as your boy say, at the same damn time. So that was my run in with those boys. I gave them brews that night, trying to sucker them up and sucker them in. But I think they know what was up too. Cause they were like, well, we, well, we gotta go when you get off. And I was telling them over to the hood. They were like, we know where that is. We be over the car. We don't go over there too much and shit like that. I was like, man, come on, man. Y'all boys can come over here. It's cool over here. It's cool. It's cool over here. But they did not go with me. They did not go with me. Did not go with me. Okay. I have one more story story for y'all tonight because I don't want to give all my stories out because I want to make this a like a, a, a storytelling event so y'all could be tuned in and, and watch and the tune in and watch and subscribe and donate cash app dollar sign DC Frenchman IG DC Frenchman but um yeah I'm gonna give y'all y'all want one more story I got one more story for y'all. One more story from an entertainer that I used to love. This was my man's right here. This was my man's right here. No bull. 
I used to emulate him. I used to emulate that flat top he used to have, that fade on the side, the clothes. I used to have the women he used to have. No other than the Big Daddy Kane. <laughs> the Big Daddy Kane. Again, Raleigh, North Carolina, Capitol Boulevard at the hotel on Capitol Boulevard. Big Daddy Kane. This is about Big Daddy Kane. My run-in with Big Daddy Kane. Well, his run-in with me because he didn't know who I was. And he wouldn't have never knew who I was. Okay, my run-in with Big Daddy Kane, as I said. I was at work again. I was an engineer at this hotel on Capitol Boulevard, US-1 in Raleigh, North Carolina, where Big Daddy Kane frequents. Well, he used to frequent when he was a young man, probably in his... 20s, 25 or something like that and stuff like that. But I lived at the hotel as an engineer at the hotel and I lived at the hotel. Most of these jobs that I worked at gave me premises on these places because I work like that and I'm smart like that. Gave me a place to live at the hotel. So I stayed at the hotel while I worked at the hotel. Woke up in the morning, go to work. Boom, bam, boom, easy. So I'm in the hotel this night and I'm on I'm on call and stuff, and I keep hearing people say, "Big Daddy Kane in the hotel, Frenchy." Big Daddy Kane, in the hotel. I'm like, man, that nigga is not coming to this. He go come to a fancy hotel, believe that. He not coming to this hotel over here. I'm I hope he don't come to this hotel because you know me in my mind. I'm thinking, I work, but I'm on them blocks, boy, too. And I used to do what everybody else used to do too to stay irrelevant, stay relevant. No, I say irrelevant to stay relevant. Okay, but um, Big Daddy Kane, I'm like, okay, I'm walking, I'm doing my tours and I'm doing stuff. It's on the late, it's probably on the late, about 10 or 11 o'clock at night, 9.30. It's getting late. Boom. I look and I hear the girl, yeah, they checking Big Daddy Kane in the hotel tonight. I'm like, ooh, mmm. Uh, let me go. Oh, oh, I might need to make some calls or something. I'm like, uh, I love Big Daddy Kane, man. This is my man. Ain't nobody like the Big Daddy Kane, man. Who could do? Who would do anything to a man like the Big Daddy Kane? Unless you's a hater, a straight hater. Okay, so I'm in the hotel. Excuse me, folks. Let me get something to drink. I'm going to finish this story up. Hold on, guys. I'm going to finish this story up. But y'all going to have to go with me a little bit. Ah! Yeah, that's a picture of some. That's me, y'all. That's a picture of me that I made. Y'all see the resemblance? See the gold in his mouth? It's a resemblance of me. Yeah, that's me right there, guys. All the artwork that you see in the house. I, I, that's me. That's what I do. I do artwork. But let me finish this story about um, Big Daddy Kane. Yeah. Let's finish the story of Big Daddy Kane. I need me a lighter, a lighter. The story of Big, my last story of Big Daddy Kane. Kane Gang. Okay, this is the story of Big Daddy Kane. I'm looking around. Everybody say French. Check it out, French. Um, Kane in the hotel. I'm like, man, Kane ain't in no hotel, man. Then I look, I dare go Big Daddy Kane. Kane's in the hotel. Kane is in the hotel, everyone. I don't want to drop my phone. My phone will fall 12 feet off the side of the building. We don't want that to happen with the guys. 12 feet outside of the building. 12 floors down. You don't want that doing. Down there, no. So, Big Daddy Kane passes by me in the hallway, right? 
Big Daddy Kane, I don't like smoking in my house, y'all. That's that's a no-no. So I comes outside on my balcony and do it big. But um, Big Daddy Kane passes by me in the corridor. And I'm looking. I'm like, damn, Big Daddy Kane, what's up, baby? And he said, what's up, man? What's going on with you, baby? I said, man, I can't believe I'm talking to Big Daddy Kane. I said, what you got going on tonight, Kane? Kane said, um... Big Daddy Kane said, shit, I got a show. I got a show, and I'm late for that joke, man. But hold on, let me tell y'all what happened, though. The reason how I know it was Big Daddy Kane, the girl called me to the front, she was like... Kane, Big Daddy Kane's toilet is stopped up. Yeah, I told y'all I was a technician, meaning I did the maintenance in there. I stayed a living on maintenance at the job joint. She was like, Big Daddy Kane's um, room stopped up. I'm like, for real, it's toilet. I said, shit, I got Big Daddy Kane. I, I plunged Big Daddy Kane shit down the toilet. That ain't shit. <coughs> the reason why I said that, because I can get up in Big Daddy Kane's room and see what the fuck. Do a big daddy Kane got up in his room for the bitches. What do you got for the bitches so I could um go get me some of that shit? I need some of them them clothes and some shoes or the style. I got to get that style too. I'm a young man, shit. You older, but I want that young that style so I can turn into a rapper or do something too. So big daddy, but as I'm going to, he don't know it, but I'm going to unstop his toilet at the same time he leaving out the hotel. So I got the keys to everything. I goes up in Big Daddy Kane's room, right? I goes back to the, the, the to the damn um to the bathroom with my plunger. I goes to the bathroom with my plunger. And the first thing I see on Big Daddy Kane's um sink is trunk uh motherfucking trunks and Motherfucking ounces and ounces of gold, y'all. I swear to God, man. I swear on my son, my mama. And you know I don't play with my mama on my mama's videos. I don't play with my mama. I see gold everywhere all over this nigga's dresser. All over the <coughs> rings, chains, medallions, gold, diamonds. I'm like, what the fuck? I saw that hit the jack fucking pot. Yo, Mo, I done hit the jackpot, Mo. I done ran into Big Daddy Kane. I got the key to the room, and I got Big Daddy Kane. All this nigga's gold, rings, diamonds, and everything. This nigga just walked out the hotel and drove off. I'm about to call my niggas, and they about to come in this room and take everything. But in my mind, all I can hear is another hope. I can't think of the song. Back in the days, it wasn't nothing like that. Another fella by the name of the Big Daddy Kane. And all I can think about is the Vapors and Biz Marquee. And all I can hear is Biz Marquee in my ear like, Frenchy, why you can do that to my man, man? So guess what I said? Man, I ain't fucking with Big Daddy Kane. This is my motherfucking man's. And ain't even my man said, what's up to me? Cool as hell. So I... Left Big Daddy Kane shit alone, man. I left all Big Daddy Kane jewelry alone. Unplugged Big Daddy Kane's toilet, which he wouldn't know shit in. It would just stopped up. Unplugged his toilet, picked this shit up, touched Big Daddy Kane's jewelry, set it back down on the counter just like I found it and shit. Locked this door up and protected that room with my life. And just will always remember that story. I picked all Big Daddy Kane's jewelry up that night in the room when I unstop your toilet. And my name is the Frenchman from D.C. If you ever see this, I picked all your jewelry up. Wanted to call some peoples up there to come and get at all that. But I love you. You my man. And if you ever give me a chance, I want to meet you. I'm D.C. Frenchman signing out. And that's my story, Big Daddy Kane. That's three stories I gave you. And I got a whole lot of more stories for my DC Frenchman show for my public. Thank y'all for tuning in. You all have a good night.
stories from the city.